All right. Good morning, everyone, and hello. Uh, thank you for joining me today for this month's Solution for Rural Development webinar titled How to Leverage Your Business for the Holiday Season. This webinar is brought to you for free by the Arizona Rural Development Council and the Local First Arizona Foundation. These monthly webinars are based around rotating topics that address various issues and solutions surrounding the development process, specifically to rural areas. Now, before we get started, I want to go over a few housekeeping rules. So, as you're listening, if there's any issues with your audio, make sure that your volume is at the appropriate level. If you're having any visual difficulties, uh, it helps to make sure that all of the programs or other windows that you have open are closed. And if you're having some very severe issues where these prior suggestions aren't working for you, our next suggestion is that you log off and then log back on. This sometimes helps. Um, so this webinar has been pre-recorded um, and is made available to you now, but um, in the past, generally our webinars are live. Um, and with that being said, for the question and answer, uh, we ask that you reach out to Matthew Clyde um, or myself with any questions via email. Uh, the contact info is located at the end of the presentation. All right, so pictured here is me, your host, Maya Ozzy. Just a little bit more about myself. I grew up in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia and received my undergraduate degree from Radford University, which is nestled in the Appalachian Mountains of Southern Virginia. My work and research has focused around community and economic development, tourism development, and natural resource management all throughout rural areas. A huge point of focus within all of my work uh, is looking towards sustainable and equitable solutions. Now, our speaker today is Matthew Clyde. In two th Matthew Clyde of Ideas Collide. And in 2005, Matthew launched Ideas Collide, Inc., a digital marketing firm that serves clients worldwide, including brands such as Paul Mitchell, Intel, Vitamin Water, and Best Western Hotels and Resorts. In 2013, the Business Journal named Matthew to be the 40 under 40 list of influential business leaders in Phoenix, and he's been recognized on their list of top 25 minds in sales and marketing. So we are going to go ahead and get started hearing from Matthew. Get away. All right, hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm just trying to get this set up. Um, and we are very excited to be here with you today. Uh, we uh, have prepared a lot of materials that are going to really hopefully inspire you to start to prepare now for the magic of the holiday season. Uh, and we will be really covering a lot of great content today, a lot to share. Uh, and I just want to thank you and welcome all the localists. Uh, we are a part of the local movement. We love Local First. We love Arizona. And anything we can do to advocate and better uh, the local market of Arizona, um, we're all in. We're invested to make this a better state and a better um, uh, community for business and for just uh, our, our livelihood and well-being. So welcome, everybody. I, I thank you for your time today. Ideas Collide, a little bit about us. We are a custom marketing studio. We build everything from uh, sophisticated uh, e-marketing solutions and marketing automation platforms to building content marketing, brand identities, and, and launching you into uh, the marketplace. And again, we thank you for giving us your time today to talk a little bit about this season for marketing magic that's about to hit us on um, the holiday season. And I hope if you have questions or anything that you want to follow up with, um, here's how you can connect with me uh, via Twitter uh, and also um, uh, email as well. 
I'm happy to share out any information uh, that may pop up. But what I really hope that we learn and share today is how to tell an engaging story about buying local during the holidays and how to connect your own personal story, your brand to that. We're gonna give you some tips on capturing customers um, to purchase more in store and avoid that phenomenon that we see a lot now of showrooming. And uh, for those of you, I know many of you are familiar with this, this is really where you might get a customer that comes in and wanders through and may touch the merchandise and experience it and, and see, you know, in person, the texture or see if it's going to fit, you know, the living room. And then they walk out the door and they bought it, buy it online. So get to give some, some practical, useful tips and maybe how to um, combat that a little bit. And I think throughout all the content uh, that we shared today can really help you in avoiding that showrooming effect. We're talking about how the holidays can be a golden opportunity, not only for retailers, which is often the, the thought behind uh, the holiday season, but also for service providers and give you practical uh, marketing tips for, for all types of businesses. We're going to cover the right channel mix. And this is about selecting whether it's print, social, public relations, whatever might be right for your business uh, through some planning tools. And that's really a lot of uh, some of the things we're going to share at the beginning here is some basics and how to make a smart marketing plan work for you, uh, not only this season, but year round. And lastly, I just hope to inspire you with some new ideas and approaches that maybe you haven't thought of. So if there's one thing that you wake, walk away with, it's hopefully maybe a new idea or something you haven't uh, tried before. The key takeaways that I hope you walk away with today is that it's just, at the end, it's just important to stay smart and keep it simple. And don't be limited by, by creativity. Innovation always stands out and allow yourself to be more innovative in your, your marketing efforts. I uh, hope that you can walk away really embracing what's unique to you and embracing your localness, which I know Local First is always advocating and is great, has great website and materials about how to embrace your localness. Uh, another key takeaway that I, I hope that we um, cover today and, and really adds a benefit is how to take more of that customer-centric approach to your marketing and understand better what they want from you as a business. And especially during the holidays, focusing on, in on convenience, experience, and personalization are so key. And then lastly, just that important step to, to make a plan, take the time to invest and be flexible as you're in the season and in the moment to adjust it as needed. So those, those are the key takeaways and shares that we, we're going to be um, uh, covering uh, as we go through this content. So let's, let's start out by where we really think the basic element is, which is building a smart a marketing plan to work for you. Now, I often look at this as a pile of Legos. Uh, so many opportunities, so many things to build, so many different channels out there of where you can market your business. And sometimes you look at this and you're like, I don't know, out of all of these different pieces and sizes, what's the right fit for me? And I think the best advice I always give people is to step back and make that plan. Use the plan to help guide you to know what to build. That's why Legos come with a set of instructions and it helps you guide you to the steps you need to take to reach the right customer, to use the right media, to use the right channel to execute. And those step-by-step -step instructions, if you take time to build it up front now and invest that time now, in your, the moment of the busyness, you're going to know how to execute better and you're not going to have to be so reactive. And it allows you also to you know, focus on your customer service, allows you to focus on your operations, your inventory. And much like you manage those carefully, you also have to take that time uh, to invest in your market planning and, and build that set of instructions that's right for you. That planning and preparation is always essential. I love this quote uh, from Abraham Lincoln that just states it simply as, if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend six sharpening my ax. And so we always have to take time out of our busy lives, running our businesses on a day-to-day -day basis, and do some planning and invest that time. Because success really occurs when you have that opportunity meeting your preparation. And that's what you're going to be ready for. You're going to be ready for more opportunities to come in your door if you do that planning up front now and be ready to really uh, take on the season that's about to hit us. 
So part of this too, of planning and preparation, the goal of that is to avoid what I call random acts of marketing. And, and we do that a lot. We just kind of throw something out there like, oh, let's just, you know, throw in a promotion or let's uh, send out an email, but it's very random in its, in its effort and doesn't always maybe generate the success you're looking for. And that's where planning can come into place because what we want to avoid is something that's best illustrated um, from a movie clip that I'm going to show here. Uh, and being this is about the holiday season, I picked from uh, one of my favorite movies during the holidays, uh, Christmas Story, and uh, it tells the story of Ralphie who wants that red eye BB gun, if you're familiar with the movie. But this clip illustrates how random acts of marketing can be seen as big disruptions to the customers we're trying to reach. And they're, they're anxious, they're hungry for our product and service, but we have to deliver to them something that's relevant, meaningful, and personal so that it can add value and they want to make that purchase. So I think this clip here Be it known to all and sundry that Ralph Parker is hereby appointed a member of the Little Orphan Annie Secret Circle and is entitled to all the honors and benefits occurring there too. Signed, Little Orphan Annie. Countersigned, Pierre Andre in ink. Honors and benefits already at the age of nine. Come on, let's get on with it. I don't need all that jazz about smugglers and pirates. Listen tomorrow night for the concluding adventure of the Black Pirate Ship. Now it's time for any secret message for you members of the Secret Circle. Remember, kids. Only members of any secret circle can decode any secret message. Remember, Annie is depending on you. Set your pins to B2. Here is the message. 12, 11. I am two, in my first eight, secret meeting. 25, 14, 11, 18, 16. Oh, Pierre was in great voice tonight. 12, I could tell that tonight's message was really 21, important. Three. 25, that's a message from Annie herself. Remember, don't tell anyone. 90 seconds later, I'm in the only room in the house where a boy of nine could sit in privacy and decode. <laughs> Aha, B. <laughs> I went to the next. E. The first word is B. S. It was coming easier now. U. <laughs> Come on, Ralphie, I'm horrible. I'll be right there, Ma. Gee whiz. T. Oh, be sure to, be sure to what? What was little orphan Annie trying to say? Be sure no, to what? Annie has got to go. Will you please come out? All right, Ma, I'll be right out. I was getting closer now. The tension was terrible. What was it? The fate of the planet may hang in the balance. No, Annie, don't go! I'll be right out! Right out loud! She almost there. My fingers flew. My mind was a steel trap. Every pore vibrated. It was almost clear. Yes, 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 yes. Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. Ovaltine? Uh, offer there, but what does he get? He gets what he feels like is another crummy commercial. And that's really what we're trying to avoid and really show that we're, we don't have these random acts of marketing. We have really deliberate, um, uh, engaged marketing efforts that are going to resonate with our commercial, our, our, our consumers. And this really comes down to this planning aspect. And your plan, your marketing plan really sets with the basics of setting the right objectives and, and your goals, identifying your customers that you want to reach and the message you want to deliver, the channels that you want to deliver it in. So that would be whether it's, you know, a social campaign, an email campaign, a, a promotional flyer, a public relations effort, uh, identifying those channels and the tactics to support them. And then I building the timeline to deliver it, knowing well in advance, like, hey, 
uh, historically, I know these are these are the times where I can really make the most impact in, in generating holiday sales and, and building your marketing around that. And then the ongoing management optimization to deliver the results and adjustments at times that you need to make this plan work. And you don't always have to just look at this as um, uh, something that you just turn on for the holidays. It can be used year round, but it can also be used to mobilize if you're really seeing a sales slump unexpectedly, or you maybe you, you're really starting off the holidays great and, and sales are there, but then something comes up and it just throws what you intended to happen off and maybe step back, build that plan, identify some new things that you need to be doing and, and really try and avoid those random acts of marketing. Now, part of marketing too is, and, and planning it out is this part artist, part scientist that we, we juggle. And on the scientific side is that data and it's your sales analysis and it's insights from your customers and it's dialogue with your customers. It's, it's, it's actually having that, you know, what I would call mini focus groups as they're coming in and out of your business or they're sharing um, their experiences with you via email or, or via social. And it's coupling that with the artistic side of like creating a great compelling message and great visuals and a story that tells why your local uh, business is so important to uh, maybe a product or an offering that you are providing to your community. So balance that part artist and science and it's a process that's essential and looking at both elements is really gonna how you can avoid again random acts of marketing and have a smart marketing plan. A great example of this that is within my own work is we do a lot of work for um, Paul Mitchell. Now, that's a, a large national brand, but we work also individually with their locally um, run schools across the country. So they're locally um, sourced businesses, local communities that are really drawing in um, uh, individuals who are all about you know, creating uh, dynamic hair design and being um, uh, professionals in the cosmetology field. And there's an art and science to this in how the message is built in how we take the insights of who we're trying to reach and delivering it strategically through great creative and great copy. And we test it and we trial it. Um, and that's part of the scientific part again, to see what, what they respond to. We may do A and B testing. We might put two offers out there that get them to apply or enroll in the school. And it's always this great art and science. And part of that, too, comes in looking at what you have in front of you. In this case, within the Paul Mitchell school system, we have tremendous creativity of people who are hair designers creating these beautiful works of art through hair. And we can take those works and maybe inspire it to create great visuals and great storytelling on through social and email and web campaigns to enrich the story and balance the art and science um, and drive the result that they're looking for. So that's that balance of art and science that we constantly have to be thinking about as business owners in delivering a message and delivering an offer and in attracting a customer. So making that art and science work for you, here's just some high level tips of, of what you can be asking and, and setting up um, context for. Often it's great just to step back and go, what do I have to work with? What data do I have? Uh, what are my sales reports looking about? Like, what did I learn from last year that I can apply to this year? Also, what do I have to work with visually around me? What's in the room right now that can maybe tell my brand story? It can tell about my product, my service, what I offer that's unique. Um, you can capture those in that moment right in the room. Uh, ask what's my time frame, and look at time frame historically, as I mentioned, for the data part to, to build your plan and to look at those insights to help influence uh, what may you want to do differently this season in delivering your message and in what you can attract for new customers. Are there other data points that where you can garner better information from your customers to know them better? Can you send out a quick polling survey um, via email? Can you ask them to fill out a paper survey when they come in the store? Can you just have a quick dialogue and go, hey, what made you come in today and why? Uh, wh where do you shop for the holidays and how can we be a part of it? Don't be afraid to just have those casual conversations because that might give you further insight into how you can build art and science in, in your marketing efforts. And then I always love to ask, how can you build or develop a different point of view? Because you might always try a traditional approach, but it's sometimes that unique little different point of view, that spin that could give you something that really sparks and attracts a customer in a new way. So some simple basic tools in, in doing this and balancing that is 
as I mentioned, collecting that data, every detail can matter. And it's not just only in the numbers, but as I mentioned, in opinions, your instincts, and your intentions. Don't ever ignore what got you. And if you're being really successful or have been successful in some of your business endeavors, to build on that as your foundation and continue to explore and innovate from there. And if you're struggling and you're, you're still trying to like get um, things up on things up on things up, on that holiday season, trust those instincts and really have that conversation with your customers to know what, what brings them in and what's going to continue to attract them to come into your, your, to your store or your product or your service. Now, I think analysis is so important in that scientific part. And, and I think one of those basic business uh, things I learned in business school was to always step back and do a SWOT analysis. And this may seem uh, a little, you know, basic, but it's so valuable and it sometimes can take you into a different frame of mind that you're not thinking about when you're running the day to day. So as you build your plan, also take time to identify your strengths, your opportunities, your weaknesses and your threats, and then really focus in on those strengths and opportunities to help identify where your, your future marketing efforts can lie. And, and really leverage the strengths in your message and knowing how to tell those through compelling stories and through visuals in your marketing that can really resonate with your customers because those strengths are what going to make you stand out. And as you extract and build that, that SWOT analysis will help guide future ideas, solutions when you're running into some challenges, um, different approaches, opportunities. All of this will guide your plan. And for those that are helping you, and that you bring in to, to help run this and, and, and for those that can you know, bring in additional support, uh, that SWOT analysis can help them see the picture of, hey, this is the strengths we're focusing on, but we've got to be aware of, of these um, threats and weaknesses as well so that we can really leverage these opportunities, extract and build from that SWOT analysis. Analysis and planning really, as I mentioned at the beginning, provides opportunity because customers really start their holiday shopping earlier than we really think often. And so now is the time to start that plan. Now is the time to do your SWOT analysis. And now is the time to start your holiday marketing. Because if you look at this great data from HubSpot, um, it shows us that a quarter of shoppers are already completing their shopping before Halloween. I mean, there's an open window you know, in the August, September, October timeframe to maybe really get ahead of that and really provide value um, for your most loyal customers that are coming in the store now about how you can help them with their holiday plans or their holiday services. 48% said they did the majority of their shopping before Cyber Monday, right after the Thanksgiving holiday. And 52% have completed shopping completely by December 10th and only 1% are waiting till Christmas Eve. So there is a large market there for you to seize upon and how you can capture their mind share now and not waiting um, to the last minute. Give them those opportunities now. Now, I'm a, in a visual way, this is how your marketing plan can look. And it, it breaks down in some really simple, what I call buckets or squares here, where you can fill in clearly your plan. And at the top of this, is your value proposition. This is your statement about why you are important, why your product, your service, what you offer has value and meaning to the customer you're trying to reach. What is the value proposition? And your customer segments, who you try to reach, who are your key customers? And then these different elements, and this is where we're gonna focus most of our time today, is how you can build those customer relationships, key partnerships, and have the right channels um, to deliver that message, that value proposition, and reach those customers. And then in your planning, identifying key resources, who's going to help you go and do this is so important, knowing the key activities and dates, and then the cost structure, obviously, and the revenue streams are foundational um, to the marketing plan as, as you execute. So this is a great visual guide, a great way as a snapshot to go just, if, if you don't have a lot of time, simply write in some simple statements here in each one of these boxes about what you're going to do or what your value proposition is, who your customer is, how you're going to build a customer relationship, what the cost you're investing, and then your expected um, return and, and, and monitoring that through your sales and data. Now, all of this really focuses in on how to really think about that customer that you're trying to reach and attract or continue to build loyalty with on their journey. Because the consumer decision journey is a strategic thing. It's, it's really where we, and, and this is very common in that, that purchase funnel 
that purchase cycle is that we start with awareness and we become aware of a brand or a product or a service or an organization then we get more familiar with it then we turn that familiarity into consideration and then we really can make the conversion into purchase intent and loyalty that's what we're always driving for now often as businesses we think of this as a very linear approach step by step and the reality though is that the new consumer journey is a very much a non-linear uh, multi-dimensional because we're in a multi-screen multi-task world and it evolves into all these different components and so you have to hone in on do I want to strengthen my online presence? Do I really need to invest some more in print media? Um, what's my in-person interaction and how is that happening? Does TV and media play a role? Uh, what's the value of word of mouth? All of these are non-linear and they're always happening and they're always um, wrapped around influencing the consumer and to make them aware of your product and service. So if you break these down, these help you identify where you might want to invest your time and efforts in these channels. And by knowing the right customer that you've targeted and the right message, you can then deliver and identify the channels you want to operate in. Now, I think some of the most important ones for today and especially in the holiday period is in that online presence, websites, emails, digital, social media, reviews, and search. And I'm going to give you some, some data points uh, in a few minutes here that really show why that's um, where you might want to invest some time. My, my assumption is that that word of mouth is something you're doing every day and you have to continue to do every day and work at it and work at it. Um, and that's powerful marketing. So don't ignore that in your marketing plan, but you might want to direct some of your efforts too into some of that in-person in interaction and also in your online presence as you um, build out a holiday marketing plan. Because as you think about that consumer journey and where they're going to find your brand, your product, your service, um, you're competing for a lot of customers, especially in the holiday period. Not only are you competing for the customer, but you're competing for their attention. And there's something really important in today's marketplace to keep in mind is that a consumer's attention span is less than six to eight seconds. That is a second less than a goldfish. That is scary. And that's what we're competing against. We're competing to capture their attention in a, a moment, a second, uh, and draw them in in some way. And so we always have to be constantly feeding our, our marketing efforts to see what will capture them, what will bite, what will they bite at, what will find um, resonance with them. And when you know you've found that, build on it and grow with that uh, because it can be very powerful once you've been able to hook them. Uh, but you always have to be thinking that there's a lot of competition for their attention out there. And so you have to be on your A game often to really think about what you're going to offer as a compelling message, offer, promotion um, to, to get them to pay attention. Part of that too comes into this digital influence. That's why we're so uh, time starved and, and we have such limited attention spans because we live in a multi-screen world and we're in a multitasking world. And whether that's good or bad, it's the reality of how consumers think and behave today. And so understanding a lot of great stats are up here on the screen, but one I really wanna call out to you is that 80% of shoppers say that they engage with a retailer or a brand or a service through a digital channel before even going into a store or before even wanting to make a purchase. So that means they're looking at you on Instagram, they're looking at you on the website, they're looking at you um, on online reviews and Yelp reviews. They're out there looking and monitoring and seeing like, what, what, what's the impression of, of this brand and the service? Oh, I, I, I'm discovering, I'm learning about this brand and then they're encountering it through all these different channels to then be drawn in. And so that digital presence is more and more important, especially as you think about getting to that lower uh, funnel of activity for consideration, purchase, and drawing in lo loyalty. So your marketing plan and your strategy really has to focus on some of those lower funnel activities, uh, whereas the upper funnel activities of awareness and familiarity is really the the, the awareness of messaging and getting the right customer um, target in place. And then your, your channels, your tactics, that digital presence is really in the consideration and purchase intent stage. So again, high level at the, the upper funnel is the value proposition and your, your understanding your customer. And this is really where 
your story comes into play. And knowing that value proposition and building that compelling story has got to be essential to your plan and then starting point. And your brand story is what's going to help build that awareness and familiarity. They're going to start to remember it. It's going to be part of that word of mouth of what people share. But in a digital world, you have to ask yourself, is your story still in paperback? Is it digital? Is it quick? Is it going to meet to the attention span, that short attention span of today's consumers? So the power of your story has to be compelling, but it has to be focused. And personal branding stories really tell the why, the emotional appeal behind your company, service, and product. And, you know, I've talked to some accountants out there. I've talked to um, people that own air conditioning companies, and they make an emotional appeal about their product and service. And sometimes it's very personal. It's, it's about why they started the business and what they want to do in the community. Those are real um, emotional elements that add value and compelling um, reasoning behind your brand story. It communicates the essence of why you're in your business. And it really is important to, to tie to what you are known for and connect your story to that offering. So these are some good takeaways in how you can start to build that story if you haven't already worked on it or maybe hone in on it a little bit more. But that focused storytelling for the digital age is really important. I'm going to share with you a little bit about um, the Ideas Collide story. Uh, Ideas Collide was founded by myself and uh, two of my other business partners uh, 10 years ago. And it was founded because I cut out of a magazine a clip that said, you can't love your life if you don't love your work. And I had worked 15 years in corporate marketing. And one day I was staring at that in my corporate office and working for a very large company. And I had about a $15 million marketing budget that I ran. And I worked with some of the world's best advertising agencies. And I looked at that statement. I said, that is no longer true. I need to change that. And so I decided that I was going to launch a company that one, would put its team members first so that they love to come to work and then in turn would show customer love to the clients that we served. And that's how we built our organization. And we also built it on the agency we wished we had when we were sitting behind that desk at a corporate office. The agency of marketing and delivering um, great advertising and great ideas that we could pick up the phone and rely on. And so we started to make a list of an agency that we wish we had when we ran corporate marketing programs and launched Ideas Collide with this idea that we're an agency that's been in your shoes because we've sat on your side of the desk. And so the majority of the team members that work alongside me that are my partners um, come from corporate marketing backgrounds because they can empathize with the products and services and needs of the client in a more real way and not operate in just a what I call an agency bubble that doesn't really think about the real day-to-day -day aspects of, of, of marketing and running a business. And so that allows us to be truly an extension of a marketing team uh, for any client that we work with and deliver custom-made marketing solutions. Now that's my story and that's the, the compelling unique selling points of, of our brand that we have here at Ideas Collide. Now, the other important part of storytelling is that you have to make me care because in the digital age, you want me to share it. And so that word of mouth is not only translated in conversation, but it's also translated digitally in sharing. So make me care, then I will share. And that's the power of social media today. That's the power of the web and your online presence. So as you're building that marketing plan and you're, you're combining the part artist with the part scientist, you have to balance that story, um, both the emotional and logical. Because we, we weigh both in our brains. Um, the logical helps us in our uh, structure and in our um, reasoning. And that's really where the mind comes into play. But the gut and the heart also play a part in the decision process for most of us. And that's because great stories drive emotion. And emotion is what helps inspire action. So the power of your story resonates in everything because storytelling relates to in the things we buy, the decisions we make, how we spend our time, stories govern and influence these actions. And this idea comes from a great book um, from uh, Brains on Fire uh, that you can maybe write down that really talks about how to build more of a movement. And the beautiful thing about what Local First has done is they've, build a, they've built a movement for Arizona. They've built a story for all of us to rally behind and it's created that influence to take action. 
And so make sure that as you're building that story, you're building that emotional connection to the story that you're going to tell about your brand, your product, your service. Now, the best way to illustrate this and how storytelling can inspire action is from a case study um, where we had a challenge, uh, given a challenge, we'd made an observation and we delivered a solution. And this was for a local business so that we worked with, Makayos. And uh, this was dur during the downturn in, in 2010, you know, a lot of local businesses struggling with the economy and they really wanted to um, amp up their marketing and get their story out there. And they wanted us to tell the story of how Makayos invented the chimichanga. They were the inventors of the chimichanga. It was uh, an accident that the burrito fell in a deep fat fire and uh, the chimichanga was born. And that's their story. And for over 65 years, they've been telling that story about the invention of the chimichanga. Well, that was our marketing challenge. But what we did is we stepped back. We took a different point of view. We observed a few things. And rather than just put out there that they invented the chimichanga and, and put out a press release and a promotion to come buy more chimichangas, we observed a few things and took some insights in first. We used the data part. And what we started to realize is that we found a very interesting fact that the state of Arizona does not have a state food. Now, most states do. Uh, there's the potato for Idaho. There's uh, a lot of great um, state foods out there that um, really tell the story of that state and their connection to that food. So from that observation, we thought, why not? Why can't Makayos maybe petition through a mock campaign for the chimichanga to be the state food of Arizona. Now, as bizarre as that may sound, as you may not agree with it, it created a story and it created a conversation and it launched a campaign that we called Check Yes for Chimney. And it was a mock referendum to make the chimichanga the official state food, um, Arizona uh, state food. And we created, um, in partnership with Makayos, um, an entire movement, a campaign around this idea. And it created a reason to advocate their story further. And it created a way to seamlessly integrate the online presence I was talking about and in-store activity. Because you could come into a Makayos and sign the petition, whether you agreed with it or not, you could sign it if you wanted to, to put on uh, the ballot, uh, the motion to make the chimichanga the state food of Arizona. And we got legislators involved, we've got the media involved, and it just slowly started to build into a movement. And there were arguments for, and there were arguments against. And the power of this story is that people were able to select I voted buttons online and share those out. They could come in and get a button when they participated in the store. They could get discounts on the chimichanga if they ordered one in store. And it started to build recognition until Amazingly, and never intended for the, the, the campaign itself, but remarkably, the power of storytelling is that it got coverage on the front page of the New York Times National Edition and the print edition. And that really then sparked a lot of new um, coverage. And millions of media impressions later brought in a strong ROI in chimney sales, and it really gave reasons for the customers to come into the restaurant and also share it via social. That's the power of a great story. And I hope maybe it inspires you to think maybe differently about your story, your product, your brand, your service. Now let's go back to this art action and marketing plan and focus in on tactics and solutions and building customer relationships, key partnerships and channels. Um, and in looking at that, let's look at our customer relationship building. 90% of, of Consumers believe an online review is more important than getting it from a salesperson. And 92% trust customer recommendations from others over any other branded content. So the power of word of mouth and the power of online reviews is more important than ever. These influencers are what can generate from a recent study by McKinsey twice the sales of paid advertising. And 61% of consumers made a purchase after reading about it via a blog post or social media. So we can't ignore these facts anymore. And it forces us that in that customer journey, we have to think about how our marketing can become more relevant, more valuable, and more personalized. 
And so let's look at this customer centric marketing approach. And I've just come up with a quick list of ideas of how you can add value. You may be already doing these, you may have dropped doing them and you may remember to do them again, but here they are. Um, send out personalized notes, remind your customers you value their business. Maybe you can start to set up personalized shopping by appointment, um, either in person or maybe even via text message. People are so busy and giving them convenience is a powerful tool, especially during the holidays. <laughs> you can offer exclusive value added offers, maybe surprise them with a value added offer in their package or um, build some packaging of surprises for them. You can offer a service upgrade, a VIP experience. Maybe they get champagne service during the holidays, a bonus treatment. Or if you're in the service industry, maybe they book now for a product and pay for it and they get a bonus offer or a holiday gift card. Um, if you're a tax preparer or offer a, a, a service like that, maybe they book their appointment now, pay for it, and then they get a value add um, by booking it for the holidays. You can always add that specialized service level for a customer centric ap approach. Like I was saying for those time starved customers, convenience is a buying motivator and a trigger to purchase and often will allow for a higher price point. Uh, some great examples of this uh, drive through curbside gift cards. They can just come in, pull up and get the gift card they need. Uh, maybe you already have gifts, gift sets to go and on the go and you promote these via email, via social, uh, simple ways to add convenience for time-starved customers. Um, set non-standard hours for busy individuals and families. Uh, this can be very helpful um, for busy parents, busy uh, millennials that, that may not have the time and eight to five, and you offer those off hours to help them get their shopping done, uh, maybe learn about something you're offering in, in an evening session versus um, normal business hours. And then don't let Amazon and others steal uh, delivery from you. You can offer concierge service level. You can offer delivery as well. Maybe it's for free. Maybe you build it into your, your, your service. Maybe it's for a certain purchase amount, you know, $100 and, and we'll deliver it um, in two days or whatever it may be, or for a nominal fee. But think about that and, and compete with uh, what's already out there in the marketplace. Add your, you add your, you know, add your. Uh, create exclusive events. Um, early late shopping hours for your most loyal customers, wish lists. I love this one. I actually did this last holidays. Um, there's a local store close by my house. Uh, my wife went in, she filled out a wish list, and then they sent me the, the wish list card with an invitation to come in on a special night reserved just for dads and kids. And you could pick out the items they want. They did free gift wrapping. Uh, my holiday shopping was done in one evening and it was convenient, simple, and fun. Uh, Card making, craft nights at your location, maybe you're a salon, you offer a class for the kids while mom gets a treatment. Uh, some simple different ways to approach it. Or maybe if you're a service or offering consultations, have a holiday craft table or a station for kids to be entertained while maybe the, the parents coming in for consultation. There's different ways to approach that. Again, creating exclusive events and thinking about the convenience and time starved consumer. And then content is always key um, and offering tips for your customers to be more prepared for the holidays, whether it's fashion tips, um, making them think about home repair, setting up their home now for the holidays. They may have 20 guests coming for Thanksgiving. Remind them of that in September and get them to set up that, that service now versus waiting for the last minute. Or holiday entertaining tips, recipes. There's so many ways that you can add value and personalization. And the big reason for this is 70% of customers prefer getting to know a company via content relationships rather than ads. And as you do this, be bold, inspire action and emotion around your brand product and service. That storytelling rule is to make me care, then I will share. So I want to give an example of this through Dan's Eyes and Dairy. This is um, a local uh, business, the one we're very passionate about. And the essence of this brand really um, started with everything you've seen in the marketing planning and in building the storytelling from the beginning. And <clears throat> I'm going to show you a quick clip of their marketing experience and building this out and the, what it generated. Because Dan's Eyes and Dairy had a mission. They were a local dairy farm. They've been in business for, for many years as a family dairy 
but they wanted to bring the rich taste of fresh milk back to the grocer by putting it in glass milk bottles. And bottles and delivering it farm fresh direct versus compiling it and going to a wholesaler and then it be distributed out to the, the, the grocer. They really wanted that farm fresh milk in glass bottles. And so they built their story and they built their visual storytelling. And they did that first before they launched their product. And they used that storytelling to uh, get shelf space in the dairy case and to tell the compelling story as to why the grocer should sell their product. And they built more of a movement in the community versus than just trying to go out there and sell the product. They really had their advocates help advocate for their product. And they did it in a rich, visual, compelling, and digital way to get their message out there. And so here's uh, an example of how all those elements, all the things we've talked about up until now, came together through this quick um, case study video. So what was built for Dan Zeisen and applying a lot of the ideas that we've been outlining and that basic uh, marketing planning that is essential to building your strategy. So this really became something that is a familiar phrase, which is a picture is worth a thousand. And in the case of Dan Dairy, points of inspiration, customers, and sales. And they really told their story visually. And you can see here uh, how they told their message in a compelling way by bringing the product to the conversation and showing how the product can enrich the lives of their customers. And they really tied the holidays and all holidays around this uh, in different capacities of how their fresh farm milk could be part of any holiday celebration. And it was a great tie-in to the holiday season and uh, eggnog from Halloween to Thanksgiving to the whole holiday season itself. And you remember, again, going back to that statistic of that 80% of consumers are looking at your digital story before they even encounter your product. This is why they have taken the time to enrich their story digitally and to highlight the products and the 
the product and the benefit of their product through all these different content pieces of recipes and great ways that you can enjoy their milk uh, and be part of a local movement. And in that compelling holiday season, there's nothing like talking about eggnog recipes and even creating, as you see here, uh, fun tags and ways to further your brand message with the holiday theme and holiday flair. That really can ignite the passion of your consumer. And when you get that passion conversation going, that's when you get testimonials like this, which I love, where they can make a statement from a customer directly that said, I have officially become a milk snob. And what a great statement. What a great advocacy for your product when people are saying, like, I'm officially a milk snob because I take your product and love it so much. So inspire passion. Make me care and share. I don't know if you noticed in the video, but one of my favorite things about all of this, as you can see here on the left, is a passionate Dan's Eyes and Dairy consumer skydiving with a glass bottle of chocolate milk in his hand. That is a passionate, loyal customer. And then they're also finding other local businesses wanting to be part of the conversation as well by creating their product um, tied to something like um, a dessert or a pastry. I mean, it's just fun ways that you can partner and build the passion across not just one local brand, but multiple local brands. So I hope that you can find ways to inspire passion through your product and service through the story that you tell from some of these examples from Dan's Eyes and Dairy. Now, let's look at key partners and in building partnership in your plan. Some great takeaways here is that really partnerships can increase your marketing reach and further your opportunities. Clearly, you're already working with local first and leverage that. Do more. Find what more you can find with this in, within this organization from their website to their, their events and meetings to really be a partner in this movement. But there's other organizations out there too to leverage. There's a local chamber. Um, there's a lot of associations that may tie to your product and service, groups, affinities, um, you know, there's so much, maybe even from your alma mater, there's different ways that you can maybe tie your product and service to that organization and get your message out there. Uh, and don't uh, ignore those cross promotional opportunities. Um, often, you know, retail can really partner easily with a local restaurant in some ways. Uh, you can create um, sharing nights, you can create game nights together. There's different things that you can be doing Maybe you can uh, partner with a local restaurant to carry a, a, a cool um, postcard about something you're doing for the holidays or, or customized gift packages that you're, you're doing that are easy to pick up as they're walking out of the restaurant. And then maybe there's something you offer in your store that is something about that restaurant and you exchange those cross promotional opportunities. Also look at complimentary services that you can package together. Uh, the holidays, you know, more and more people are looking for unique gifts and different things to give. Um, I know my own parents always give uh, some type of gift that you know, like normally I would go spend on, but they just want to kind of help out, you know, help the family out in a different way. So it may be something as simple as um, service on your, your air conditioning and your pool service. And maybe you could partner with a local business like that and you package it together and you maybe offer a value added product with that or a discount. Um, so maybe there's somebody you can part partner with in your community or in your local business that you could offer these type of services in the holidays. Uh, partner events too are great. And then also think about referral programs and incentives. Uh, I know there's a lot of different things you could be doing for uh, referrals uh, you know, the masters of this Uber and uh, uh, Lyft and others, they have refer a friend discounts and codes. How can you do that in your own business? Uh, is there maybe an incentive, a prize or giveaway that you are um, ready for uh, offering that referral, that loyalty and rewarding them for that? So think about how you could build a referral program with another partner. Now, the local movement 
is also being seized upon big businesses. And so my recommendation to you is don't let them do that. Be a part of it. Ask who can tell your story and take it further. I thought this was really interesting um, that the Renaissance Hotel, you know, downtown, great hotel, but part of a bit, you know, an important part of our downtown landscape is now doing something great to advocate local um, shops and businesses around the Phoenix area. So maybe you can reach out to some of these businesses, hotels, restaurants, um, and, and partner with them in some way. These are coasters that are found throughout the hotel that talk about um, Agua Frescas, which is, you know, a downtown vendor, um, and it is a recommendation. And so is there another business that's maybe a little bit bigger than you that you could partner with and they could help tell your story and you have that exchange, that cross-promotional exchange? Um, embrace that and take it further. Uh, I was recently just in Portland and uh, stayed at a, a boutique hotel that offered um, their local Portland ice cream uh, salt and straw, it's a famous ice cream there in Portland, and they offer it on demand. You can call 24-7, and um, they will bring it up to your room, a pint of ice cream. So maybe there's somebody locally that is a hotel or a restaurant that maybe you could get your product in front of in a unique way, and it builds that community. It builds the local movement, and that can be part of your story as you reach out to them. And as you build partnerships, don't forget about partnering for a cause, especially during the holidays. And make sure you're authentic, authentically giving back in a meaningful way. Uh, we've done this with Paul Mitchell Schools before in a fun campaign we did called Giving Back is the New Black, uh, where during um, uh, the holiday period and, and through um, the new year, um, you could, as you um, participated and used the hashtag, um, they were um, building give back to local charities um, of each school. And so this built a very clear partnered focus between the charity and the school and a cause effort. Uh, you can be a salon and offer um, uh, a discount service, a um, maybe a special treatment, an extended treatment. Uh, in some way, if they bring in uh, a toy for a toy drive program. I know a lot of local businesses do this with great success. And so that can be maybe a way to um, inspire the season of giving in a unique way. And partnering for a cause, when you really authentically give back, can surprise you. And you can get uh, more um, stories out of it. In the case uh, from Dan's Eyes and Dairy, they really wanted to give back to the Phoenix Children's Hospital. They dedicated the entire month of, of February um, that a portion of their sales went to the hospital foundation to give back to the children in need at the hospital. And that in turn um, generated some PR efforts that they didn't even intend for, and just a good cause that their own employees were um, inspired by and passionate, and also their, their, their loyal advocates were really inspired by as well. So really think about partnering for a cause, especially in the holiday period. And that's something that takes time to plan for. So you have to start planning and thinking about it now. So those are some um, ideas for key partnerships. Now we can look at um, channels and how you can take some of the channels and all those multitude of channels that are out there, but especially the digital channels and make them work for you. Uh, especially video, maybe geo-targeted advertising, uh, social, email, and search. And so in the consumer journey, now, looking at maybe the video content piece, uh, more and more consumers are, are really taking video as a way to learn more about a product and service, and brands are really using video to get that message out. And you've got a variety of things, you know, whether it's bloggers, you know, bloggers or, or influencers who, who focus on videos and share content, and they, they tell stories and provide how-to guides for products. Um, and, and background on, on all types of um, services from, from blogging, you can maybe create a blog series or um, content around what's unique about your service. Uh, you know, accounting tips, beauty tips, uh, just simple information that you can create through video. Uh, and then there's a big trend right now. Um, surprisingly, you see there on this stat here that 50 cent, 57% increase over the last um, holiday season in unboxing videos, and they're increasing in views over the last year. Now, this is a very interesting um, content stream. 
unboxing videos, you're not familiar with it, is ways that people showcase opening a product in a box. I mean, that's basically what it is. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty fascinating, but they get millions of views. It's it's quite unbelievable. And they're they're very popular in, in the beauty, electronics, um, toys, and subscription box services. Uh, but they're a little bit how-to, behind the scenes, opening up the box, learning about the product, seeing what's inside. Um, and why not embrace that for maybe some of the things you're doing in your store or for your service? Um, they're getting a lot of views. And so there might be a different way that you try this. And don't just think that you, you, you post it and they will come and find the content. You've got to go out there and you've got to promote it. You've got to email out the content. You've got to um, promote it in your store. You've got to tell your customers about it. You've got to grow that audience and make them aware that you're creating this content so they see value in it. And the valuable stat here is that 85% of consumers um, are more likely to purchase a product after watching a product video. It just gives them visually the essence of what the brand, the product, the service is. So um, there's great opportunities during the holidays to showcase this and to make your product come to life through video. Now, a lot of people feel really intimidated by video. You can spend a lot of money in creating an amazing video. And sometimes it warrants that, um, depending on the, the product or brand that you have. But you can also think in a simple execution because we luckily have the power of a film studio in our hands via a mobile device. We can all create quick videos and you can visually present your concept. You can create your um, own blogging, your own unboxing um, with a video in your hand and bring it to market. So a lot of big ideas can be simple. They can use a minimal budget, but they can be centered on a, a big idea. And there are a lot of apps out there um, that you can allow yourself to edit and, and use tools to simply edit it on your, your phone. And if you look up in the app store, whether it's uh, um, through Android and, and Google store or through um, the Apple store, look up editing uh, video apps. There's a lot out there, simple, easy to use um, to maybe tell your story. Uh, maybe you have an intern working for you in your business or um, a new coordinator that's coming in. And, and maybe that's something that they want to just take on as a project, maybe to take on and build three simple videos that can resonate around the holidays and give valuable information to the consumer that you reach. <clears throat> and then again, you got to tell your customers about it. You've got to maybe feature it at your front desk in your office or um, on your website. Uh, make sure it's known. It's not just post it and they will come. You also may even have to invest a little bit of advertising do dollars to get it out there to get exposure for it. So um, if you're going to invest the time to make the video, you also have to invest um, some money into promoting it. A great way to show how simple ideas can still be big ideas uh, is uh, through some, you know, just simple video tips that you can give um, to consumers. Um, this comes from Best Western, and it's a, a series of videos created called Travel Hacks. And they're just simple little uh, tips on how to make packing easier for your next trip. It adds value to the to the traveler and it connects the traveler to the Best Western brand. And every Best Western is locally owned and operated. So it does help in the local movement across the country. So um, we're gonna show um, one of these and, and how simple they can be executed. So that's one example of, of the video. We're going to show another one. Again, you can see how 
simple to execute, simple to deliver, and uh, visually uh, tell a story as well. And um, they're easily shared. Not a lot of production costs to, to build these and they can be easily shot. So maybe there's a tip, uh, a travel hack-like um, idea for your product and service that you can put out there um, to create. So we're gonna show uh, one more of these just to give you the essence of the idea and how simple they are. to have uh, in, in your customer experience. Now, part of this, as I mentioned, is that in building content, you are gonna maybe have to spend a little bit in building some targeted digital advertising. And targeted local ads can really be beneficial, especially if you've built a, a community up in Facebook and other or, or Instagram, there's a lot of targeting that can take place there. And you have to really think about that's where consumers' eyes and, and visually they are and where they're consuming information. Um, they're always on the go. They're always looking at their mobile devices and looking at social media. Targeted local ads can present offers. They can display your hours of business. It can be business announcements. It can talk about events, um, market your events. And it can all really get to the ideal local customer by using demographic and geographic targets. It does take some time to set up, um, but it's self-explanatory. Even Facebook and others provide a lot of how-to videos on, on how to, to, to um, target these. You can set you know, very minimal budgets to test to see if it's generating any results for you. Um, and that really delivers um, ads at the best time possible. So it can be targeted. So you know, timing wise, your customer might be just right outside your business door and they can be activated on a schedule as well to coincide with a consumer's time frame. Like maybe, you know, your ideal customer is really shopping on the weekends or after work, or again, during that special event, these targeted digital ads can really um, uh, drive a lot of the content, but also visually tell your story. Um, and you can do this via zip code, customer segmentation, uh, there's a lot of different ways like promoting a happy hour um, and really targeting in on that local geo-targeted um, influence um, to build these and to get people to come in to uh, experience uh, what you're offering in your product or service. Also at the service level, you can generate leads, actual email leads um, of people you want to target better. So um, you can develop lead ads on social media that can capture email. Uh, with the right business and the right creative strategy. You can see here that you can subscribe to information, you can provide, provide um, something of value, something that they might anticipate, something that can give them tips and information. And then you track your cost per acquisition, the number of emails you're getting, and you build your newsletter list, you build your email list. And this is a great ideal way to share content as you can give out you know, subscriptions for weekly tips or monthly tips. These leads can build to messaging um, your content via email and discount offers or events. And you define the timing of that. It doesn't have to be every week. It can be once a month. It could be once a quarter. Um, just be consistent at it and let people know like, hey, I put out my newsletter of information and tips once a month or once a quarter and can consistently deliver to that. Uh, which allows you to build that email marketing list. And email marketing for small businesses and local businesses can be really powerful. It can be low cost, high impact, but it's really absolutely more and more essential. I know a lot of people may feel like email's tired and it's consuming, but running an effective email program um, can really help you retain your customer base. Um, it can allow you to communicate regularly with them and it can improve your experience and increase your referrals, um, especially if they're having a great experience. 
So developing a few what we call trigger email communications. So uh, maybe it's a holiday wish list, uh, uh, something like we miss you, you haven't been in the store for a while. Um, we're having a special holiday event. Um, all the different things that we talked about that are time starved offerings that you may offer can be delivered in your email communications. And they can make the difference to turn maybe an existing consumer to come back into your store, or a new consumer into a repeat customer. That repetition can be very valuable to you. And there are a lot of simple cloud-based email marketing services um, that can help you do this. Uh, I think we're all familiar. You know, there's MailChimp, um, Emma, uh, Infusionsoft, Campaigner. There's a lot of different ones, um, Constant Contact, uh, that you can use and provide um, an easy way to, to help you set up trigger campaigns and invites for events um, at a low cost. So building the content, maybe building the ad strategy, and that can all feed into your email marketing efforts for your small business. Now you step back and, and look and say, what's the right marketing mix now for my business? We've talked about a lot of different things, web presence, search, um, building content for search, um, uh, email, social, events. Maybe it's webinars if you're a service uh, like we're doing today, uh, catalogs, uh, maybe mass media through public relations, um, having a stronger kiosk presence, uh, thinking mobile first, more public relations. There's a lot of different things in the marketing mix to look at. So the best advice I give is to really plan to reach your customer's journey by knowing your product service, knowing and defining your customer, knowing your story. And at that point, you can map the intersection points to paths to connect to those customers and where they may be and where you want to find them. And use that targeting to really generate um, the opportunity to bring in more of those um, consumers and opportunities into your business. So with that, I think what I wanted to kind of close out with is to really think about that one thing. And there's a great book out there called The One Thing, another great recommended read. Uh, and it has a statement in that book. It's like, what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. And sometimes you have to stop and ask that question in your marketing. Uh, a small business, sometimes it's hard to do all of these things. So maybe you, if you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe you pick one thing that you're going to really put into practice this holiday season. Maybe it's just getting your story out there and telling it right. Maybe it's really identifying your consumer and your consumer persona and how you want to reach them. Maybe that one thing is to really build your visual social media presence because you know your story now and you're going to really tell it compellingly via social media and email. But get that one thing so that as you build and work your plan over the next few months on the holidays, that each day you can say, okay, my bigger picture is to achieve this, but I'm going to do these small things each day that will help add to that big picture. And Sometimes breaking it down in that simple step can help you take on and really deliver a smart, effective marketing campaign. I want you to be passionate and unique. You are great, amazing local businesses. And so I want to see you drive and inspire action through all of these marketing efforts. And so to do that, I wanted to leave you with some unique messages and offers for the holidays that you may not have thought of or things that I've seen around um, different markets and around town or things that we've done here in, in my, my firm. I love this one. I just saw this one. This is um, an old fashioned typewriter that was put outside a stationary store um, that sold stationery and books and it encouraged people to stop in and type on the old fashioned typewriter, a letter to the North Pole. Uh, what a simple idea, but a way to attract people into your store. And it gets around that uh, showrooming effect because you're building a little bit more of a compelling reason to come in and a little bit more of a sentiment um, and it's a nice, simple touch. You can also have unique messaging and offers for the holidays um, by offering exclusive one-of-a-kind products. Uh, work with a local artist and bring them into your store or into your service in some way and feature them in your communications. Invite the artist to showcase a special night in in-store. And this doesn't only have to be in retail. I've seen dentists and accounting offices um, they hang great local artists and they sell it on their walls or they promote it. They have special events. 
Um, you can do lots of different things. And invite an artist in for a special signing or to make a custom piece. Uh, you'll be surprised how that can make a draw. And it, it, again, takes your story and makes it a little bit more unique and compelling. Some other unique messages and offers for holidays. It's a great time to introduce a customized service or holiday offering. Um, you can give a holiday spin on your services. Again, co-promoting services packaged with other local providers. Uh, provide introductory offers and position and market your product as a great value or gift for the holidays. Always thinking outside the box in gift giving. Now your unique message can also be part of your brand and product. Um, I'm seeing a lot more uh, businesses create art that are tied to their brand. And I saw, you know, these, this was ones in, in, in Hawaii, another one's here locally in Arizona, and they're creating art in a way that is a draw, but it also becomes a product that they sell in store. And so what if this one on the left was for a hair service or a salon? Uh, and what if on the right, this was for uh, maybe an architecture firm or an accounting firm that's posing a question in a different way? So there's always unique messages and you can create it bigger in a different unique way um, that is elevating your brand and showcasing it in a bigger picture. And then it can be a product or service that you offer further. So the unique message can go anywhere uh, and it can be part of your brand and product. I love this one. Again, this came from the island of Kauai, where they created, this hotel created a weather station out there, and you can see the coconut. Um, but the, the power of this is that they tied it to social media, and they encouraged people, they, they built it, and they encouraged people to snap it, share it, post it, tweet it. What could you build in your business or in your office that's shareable and unique and different? That's how you can capture that in-store moment, in the moment of purchase, and give that reason to shop in-store. Again, exclusive events, in-store only items, in-store only coupons. Motivate customers by limited time and inventory. Urgency can enhance action. And then go out and offer what other big box service providers do not. Maybe you can allow customers to run a tab if they're trusted. Um, layaway plans. And build trust and recommendations to allow for maybe auto renewals, new stocking in and delivered. Maybe a favorite item that they are, are frequently purchasing, but they don't have to think about it. You just automatically um, set it up for them and remind them it's in the store. Do that customization and you can see the loyalty come in from your customers. Finally, just embrace your localness. Do everything you can to remind people what they lose when they fail to support local stores. Remember, everyone loves to be considered a regular and feel part of the local community. Local is the new big. Embrace it. Um, you can make an impact and a difference. So as you step back, look at all the Legos, all those opportunities, pick one or two that are going to really define and elevate your brand. And what you may end up with, hopefully, is a great storefront, a great opportunity to have an amazing holiday season, and really take that uh, moment to uh, embrace and attract these opportunities in your business. So during the holidays, some key takeaways, remember convenience, experience, personalization are key and invest the time to make a plan and be flexible to adjust it. So some final takeaways, stay smart, keep it simple, creativity and innovation always stand out, embrace what's uniquely you, embrace your localness, take that customer centric approach, know what they want from you, and remember, convenience, experience, personalization. And I thank you uh, for your time and uh, participation today. And we thank Matt and everyone at Ideas Collide for being such great partners and for their wealth of knowledge that they are always so open to sharing. Um, so if you have any questions for Matt, uh, please feel free to email him at his contact information that is listed here, matt at ideascollide.com. And just to give you all a little summary of what's coming up next with the Arizona Rural Development Council and Local First Arizona Foundation, 
Um, our sister nonprofit, Local First Arizona, is hosting the annual Arizona Fall Fest on November 4th. Um, and this is a festival that was created to celebrate local businesses from all around the state. Some of our main features are the All Arizona Beer and Beer, Wine, and Spirits Garden, the Kids Zone with activities. We have live music and cultural performances going on throughout the entire day, uh, local food and chefs, and over 200 local business vendors from all around the state. So if you are not doing anything November 4th, please come join us in the Valley to celebrate Arizona. And this is our last webinar, uh, Solutions for Rural Development webinar of 2017. However, we have our first 2018 webinar, which is going to be hosted by Local First Arizona's uh, very own Kimber Lanning, and it's going to be leveraging your localness. So if you want to learn more about how to leverage your localness um, to pair with some of these ideas that Matt talked about, you don't want to just leverage your business for the holiday season. You want to keep leveraging everything you can throughout the entire year. So please sign up for our Leveraging Your Localness webinar. Um, there is registration out on the Arizona Rural Development Council website along with the Local First Arizona Events web, uh, web page. And um, we will send out an e-blast early in January to all of our newsletter subscribers. Um, additionally, if you have any questions regarding this webinar or any of our past webinars or future webinars, please reach out to me at maya at localfirstarizona.com. Um, it's actually maya at localfirstaz.com. Don't want to confuse you on that one. And my phone number is also listed below. So once again, thank you so much for your support and participation. Without you, we would not have the ability to have these webinars. Um, and we put them out there for the audience. So thank you so much. And looking forward to continuing the dialogue on solutions for rural development in the upcoming year.